Hello, Carl here with Sustainability Theory News. We're over at 10thacrefarm.com. It's run by a woman named Amy out of the suburbs of Cincinnati, Ohio, and she has created a small permaculture paradise. And I've read some of her blog posts in the past. She does create some great content. The link for this article will be in the description. 80 Ways to Homestead Without a Garden. There are a couple of tips for gardening and producing your own food, but mainly it's about utilizing local food, making your own soaps, making your own foraged products, maybe getting foraged foods or syrups or saps to make syrups. So without further ado, we'll get to it. So trying to save time and money, meal planning, eating well on a budget, the art of cooking from scratch, all this is very important. This is the basics of trying to live a more sustainable lifestyle, cooking at home. You get a lot less waste and you know what you're eating too, a lot less preservatives, how to make your own grain products. This is the first one I like to go to, this article, how to grind your own flour and choosing a mill. There's a podcast here. But there's also some helpful links. We'll go to the mill they have on Amazon.com. It's expensive. But it says it can make nut butters too. And it's got a lot of good reviews. 158 with a 4.4. That seems pretty good. I always check the one-star reviews myself. But I'll, I'll still buy something if it has a bad one-star review or two. No problem. Alright, so this one. They're talking about organic popcorn as microgreens for healthy snack in their salad. They say it has a subtle taste of sweet corn. A little bit sweet. Not too much, though, I imagine, as a microgreen. I've never heard of sprouting microgreen popcorn, but hey, makes sense as long as it's organic. So that's from here, too. And all sorts of great stuff. T canning. Canning food so you can get a lot of food wholesale from farmer's markets, maybe at the end of the day or the end of the season, and just can it to last a long time, as well as freezing how to preserve tomatoes in small batches. So there's a lot of great links in this article. Dehydrating. Dehydration is very important good for even meats and especially herbs maybe not so much greens but herbs are very good for that so you can use the herbs for eating or for medicine curing meats it's kind of like drying but usually you have some salt on there that draws the moisture out of the meat you can do salt and sugar it's a good combination cold storage winter food storage there's some tips in there fermentation you can ferment just about any food and it can store for two to six months depends on the storage conditions and the type of crop of course Making your own linen bread bags so you don't get moldy bread. Making your own infused vinegar. I haven't thought about berry infusing vinegar or infusing vinegar before. Might taste pretty good. All right, foraging. This is one of my personal ho favorite hobbies in the springtime. It's hunting for edible mushrooms. And you got some porcinis, some oysters, some chanterelles, and the morels here. There's five easy to identify mushrooms. They all come up at different times of the year. The oysters. Yeah, they're a little tougher to identify, but the morels, there's also false morels out there. And king bolites, honestly, those are a little tough to identify as well. There's some bitter bolites out there, even ones that don't stain blue. So this article does have some stuff out there. Lobsters are easy to identify, but hard to find. All right, now there's another article here, how to tap black walnut trees for syrup. I never thought about this before. I did some other research. Some people call it liquid gold. It is just... Seems pretty good. I got some access to some walnut trees. I'm going to try to do it myself. It's about that time of year. Tapping season starts for most trees as the sap runs right as the uh, days are warmer, but the nights are still right below freezing to get the sweetest syrup. All sorts of great articles in here. I'm not going to go through all of them, of course. They talk about raising chickens and animals, which isn't quite growing a garden, but uh, it is farming nonetheless. Making your own soaps and other personal care products, dryer sheets, for example. And uh, there's all sorts of lost skills here. The last one I'm going to go through is 23 Backyard Business Ideas. So if you did want to start farming or gardening, it talks about different ways to either raise fruits, vegetables. Their first ideas are, of course, livestock. If you do it right and manage the livestock, they can be well, lucrative, but it does take time and effort. If you really want to get into it, try pasture-based poultry, Joel Salatin, Polyface Farms. Uh, he has lots of books on Amazon, You Can Farm being one of them, pasture-based poultry, I believe, is another one. But again, I'm going to link to all these articles in the description. And if you'd like to see more news headlines like this, subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.